In this video, we'll discuss whether or not bacon is bad for you. Hi ladies and gentlemen, I'm Dr. Zorowski and welcome back to the channel. If you're new to the channel, it's a pleasure to have you here. Be sure to subscribe, hit that bell notification, and join our notification community so I can help you excel your health and your life. In this video, we're talking about the topic of bacon, and we want to really uncover this topic because a lot of people have been asking questions in our community on bacon because I'm a huge advocate of the low-carb diet, and it happens to be that a lot of people who like the low-carb diet also typically like bacon. And so when you look at bacon, there's a lot of information out there. It's going to cause cancer. It's going to cause heart disease, and, and, and the cancers like you know breast cancer, colorectal cancer. And so what we want to do is actually you know kind of just take all these different ideas around eating bacon and um, really look at at the facts, okay? So first of all, big problem that a lot of people have with bacon is it's high in fat and it also has moderate amounts of cholesterol. You know, one of these things that we look at today where there's a lot of research that actually said fat was actually going to drive disease in your body, all this saturated fat, we know now that that's not the case and we actually look at it as a very healthy way of getting, you know, good uh, nourishment for our nervous system, which is made up of fat. And so anyway, you know, the high fat is not a concern today. It's estimated that bacon is uh, made up of 50% mono saturated fat, much coming from oleic acid, which is similar to what you'll find in olive oil, 40% uh, saturated and 10% unsaturated. You know, and I think that when we look at this high fat issue, one of the things that, you know, is never really looked at in the research is what are you actually combining that high fat with, okay? Now, if you're combining high fat with high sugar and high carbohydrates, once again, that's a recipe for absolute disaster. It's a recipe for disease and everything. So we want to make sure that you understand that I'm recommending you combine the high fat with a low carb, low sugar, or no sugar diet, okay? So that's something we have to actually uh, take into consideration there. Next thing is cancer and heart disease. When we look at cancer and heart disease being linked to these different meats, one of the things we have to take into consideration is that for just as many uh, studies out there that prove that it does, there's just as many studies that prove that it doesn't. And the other thing that we have to take into consideration here is a lot of the studies actually are um, in the way of correlation. So basically they correlate the meat with the heart disease and cancer, but it's not actually a cause. So correlation versus causation, it's a big difference. So anyway, when we look at cancer and heart disease, once again, it's not something that I'm concerned about with eating bacon. Everything in moderation, of course, but it's not a concern of mine. Next here is salt. So a lot of people say, well, it has really high salt con salt content. Now, there's a couple things to consider here. First of all, you can get a healthier source of bacon that has lower salt. Now, salt is actually used in the curing process, and so bacon's always gonna have some salt in it, but what you can find is that some different brands will have much lower salt content. And the other thing too, when we look at salt, there is some different research out, out there that correlates salt with heart disease. But the thing is, is that, like I said, it's everything in moderation, and if you're following a low-carb diet like I am and you exercise then, you're typically looking for a way to increase that sodium intake anyway. So once again, not a concern of mine. Um, next thing here is sugar. So some people have eaten bacon forever, the same type of brand that uh, typically is unhealthy, you know, and what they'll find is that they'll find their bacon has sugar in it and they're wondering why. Well, sugar is actually used in the curing process in many cases. And so what you want to do is just find a healthier brand of bacon that does not use sugar in the curing process and also doesn't contain sugar as well. So um, once again, not a concern, just kind of switch up what you're doing here. Nitrates and nitrates. Now this is an interesting topic because a lot of people get really freaked out about this and it's something that a lot of people don't really understand. So when we look at the nitrates, basically there was a study back in the 70s that told us it's going to cause disease and destroy our health. But when we look at that study, today it's considered to be deeply flawed and almost irrelevant. And as a matter of fact, a lot of the governmental agencies went and started making rulings and laws on that study and they actually started limiting the amount of nitrates that were going into the meat. Now when we look at, let's say, traditional traditional, conventional, store-bought bacon and more of a healthier version of it, both of them still have the nitrates in it. One has it from a healthier source such as a celery and one of them is more of like a lab-made source, okay? And so anyway, you know, this is something that once again is not a concern because there's a lot of studies coming out today that are showing that the nitrates and nitrates really aren't that big of a problem for us. So once again, that's something that it's not that it's not something that we really want to focus on too much here. And, and know that nitrates and nitrates are something that are naturally occurring in the body and that even your good healthy source of bacon it still has it in it it's just from a natural source um, now when we look at bacon in general 
one of the things I want to mention is that first of all, everything in moderation. Second of all, is that it's always good to find a good, healthy source, right? Something that is uh, pasture raised, something that is you know fed and fed properly, raised on a sustainable farm. I always recommend that with any type of meat that we're buying. Now, the next thing is when we look at bacon, it's important to realize that people who have like a colitis or a Crohn's disease, something of that nature, they basically are going to have a hard time digesting pork. So if that's you, just stay away from it and focus on healing the gut. Other than that, be sure to give this video a thumbs up. Be sure to share it with your friends so that they can stop being afraid of eating bacon. And then if you have any questions, put it in the comment section here below. And then um, be sure to subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so yet. And check out my other videos on how you can improve your health. I'll see you in the next video.